knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. When discussing human evolution, we have to pick a relatively arbitrary place to start. This is because humans, like all animals, can trace their history back to the last universal common ancestor of all life on Earth. In this way, human evolution begins where all life begins, 3.8 billion years ago with some unknown single-celled organism. However, most conversations about our evolutionary history start with our divergence from other mammals, with the emergence of the primates. So let's start there too. The order primates likely arose in the late Cretaceous, further specifying from class mammalia as early as 90 million years ago. If our order really did show up this early, our ancient ancestors shared the world with the dinosaurs for 25 million years. This is over 83 times as long as humans as a species have walked the earth. As incredible as that would be, there is some dispute as to when primates truly emerged. While most scientists agree that primates were likely around in some form during the late Cretaceous, the range is technically 57 to 90 million years ago. This range is gleaned by combining molecular clock data and the specimens from the fossil record, but even so, differentiating the primates from the almost primates is a difficult task indeed. This is due to the nature of evolution. Daughter species in the process of diverging from a parent species are essentially indistinguishable. This unfortunately means that the more complete the fossil record grows, the harder it will become to demarcate species. It is sort of like picking where orange emerges on a red to yellow color gradient. This means that although determining the exact moment primates distinguished themselves from other mammals is difficult, we can certainly tell them apart once they have arrived on the scene. Purgatorius is proposed by some to be this first maybe primate. Purgatorius is a so-called proto-primate, a tree-dwelling shrew-like animal that, upon first glance, just looks like a tree shrew. But Purgatorius is unique indeed, because lurking in this unassuming little mammal are the precursors to the traits modern zoologists use to define what a primate is. So how do we define a primate? What traits set this order of mammals apart from other orders of mammals, like carnivorans or artiodactyls? Living primates are unusual in relying very heavily on vision. This is reflected in the skull by orbits that are close together, or convergent, and bounded by a post-orbital bar or plate. Primates also typically have hands and feet that are well adapted for grasping, with long fingers, opposable thumbs and big toes, as well as nails rather than claws on most digits, and also ankles and wrists that are highly mobile. Similarly, the pectoral girdle, composed of prominent clavicles and mobile scapulae, is adapted for flexibility. The dental formula is highly varied, but the most basal type seen in lemurs and lorises is 2 to 1 to 3 to 3. Primates are also known for having large brains for their body size. So how does Purgatorius stack up? Not as well as you might think. The only truly primate trait that this animal has is its starkly mobile ankles. But these ankles are a dead ringer for the undisputed fossil primates that would show up in the near future, which are found in no other mammal group. This is why there is some dispute about Purgatorius and its exact placement, but no one disagrees that it belongs close to or at the root of the order primates. Another group of maybe primates are the Plesiodapiforms. Plesiodapis means near adapis, and adapids are certainly non-disputed fossil primates. Some have argued that these animals are more closely related to Dermopterans, or colugos, than they are to primates, but this has received pushback. The main case for Plesiodapiforms being ancestral to, or a part of, the order primates is that they have the lemur loris dental formula of 2 to 1 to 3 to 3. The first euprimates, or true primates, arrived in the form of the adipoids and omomyoids around 56 million years ago. But why is it that primates evolved in the first place? There are two primary hypotheses. 
Bob Sussman proposed the angiosperm coevolution hypothesis, which supposes that primates evolved with and in order to exploit the diversifying angiosperms and their associated fruits. This may explain the roots of color vision, useful for identifying ripe fruits, and certain dental characteristics associated with frugivory, as well as the fact that in geologic time, primates and fruit-bearing trees do appear to diversify in tandem. Matt Cartmill takes the opposite approach with the visual predation hypothesis and proposes that early primates evolved to locate and capture insects. This idea may explain the insectivorous dental characteristics some early primates possess, and certainly tracks with the insectivorous primates we see today. Whatever the reason primates first began to evolve, the driver was certainly sometime in the late Cretaceous. It would kick off the radiation of one of the most successful groups of mammals, which would eventually, far down the line, yield our own species. So let's move forward and see what types of organisms came next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com. Thank you.